Now, I was laughing the other day at just how shockingly bad the reviews for Velma were, but would you believe me if I told you they've got even worse? Of course you would. Uh, that 9% on Rotten Tomatoes has now sunk to a 7%, and the critic score has not so surprisingly gone up slightly, and that 2.5 it had on IMDb has now plummeted to a, a genuinely impressive 1.7. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that Velma has become one of the most universally disliked television shows possibly of all time, certainly in uh, in recent times, and that is quite an accomplishment considering well, one, what's come out recently, and two, when you boil this down to its basics, this is an animated Scooby-Doo show. Just how badly can you mess this up? Well, it turns out much more than anyone thought physically possible, so while we, the relatively sane and mostly sentient population, sit around and have a good chuckle at the hilarity that is Velma, one person saw this as a, as a good opportunity to, to celebrate. This, of course, is Mindy herself, who took to Twitter to uh, celebrate what HBO Max is claiming to be its biggest premiere day ever. But when you actually read into it, you quickly realise that, it, although it is indeed the biggest premiere day, this is only when compared to other HBO Max original animated series. And I don't know about you, but right now I can't name another one off the top of my head, so I'm not sure if this is something worth shouting about. And maybe I'm looking into this too deeply, but it also says that it's the biggest. That... Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the most viewed, it's a little open for interpretation. And let's say, for argument's sake, that this was the biggest premiere, period. It would be a bit like saying, oh yeah, but loads of people watched the Nuremberg Trials, it's like, <laughs> yeah, but uh, I don't know if they were cheering along the people on screen, I think the majority of people tuned into this to watch the boat sink, not necessarily to get on board. I think the majority of people thought, this is Scooby-Doo, Everyone's telling me it's the worst thing ever made. How can you mess up Scooby-Doo this badly? Or Scooby don't in the case of this show because he's not in it. Just to give you a glimpse into the writing rooms of modern day shows, someone walked in and announced to the rest of the room, hey guys, you know, it's great that we get to work on this, uh, this Scooby-Doo show, but I'm getting really sick of that talking dog that's in, that's in all the Scooby-Doo stuff. I mean, what's with that? I say we get rid of that guy. And everyone else in that room clapped, and we ended up with a show like this. A show like what, Johnny? A show like this, my friend. Previously on Velma. <laughs> okay, so I might have slightly edited that, but if I'd not told you, would you have known? Really? And we kick off episode two with a hilarious bit about Fred's micro penis, because when the same geniuses that thought of the idea of a Scooby Doo show without Scooby-Doo, when they started brainstorming qualities that the character Fred would possess, of course they made his defining feature his micropenis. This is really funny stuff. This is good stuff, guys. Really good. And if you can't get enough of micropenis banter and want to watch something that's actually funny, try just watching season four, episode four of New Girl. It looks like a little tiny pigeon's egg. Don't you want to hatch the bird? And maybe I've got this twisted a little bit, but this this next line is it's a little, little bit of a head scratcher for me. His delicate teen heartthrob good looks stem from the fact that he hasn't gone through puberty yet. <gasps> now, now look, I might be missing something here, but is Mindy saying that teenagers who haven't gone through puberty yet are good looking? Ah, uh, <laughs> you sure that's something you want to be putting out there? You sure about that? Maybe, I don't know, maybe you just want to, maybe you want to rephrase that a little bit. Do I need to ring Childline? Another problem this show runs into is with its references. Now, it tries a few times to reference previous iterations of Scooby-Doo, but rather than clapping along, because this is Velma, after all, you find yourself cringing at lines you once loved. It, listening to this show drop references about Scooby-Doo is kind of like, you know when a company tries to be cool, so they make a rap song for their latest ad, it's, ugh, it's, it's rough, dude. Anyway, back to the plot, and Fred has been wrongly arrested under the suspicion of murder, and uh, Velma is very proud of this. Yes, Fred Jones, heir to the Jones gentleman's accessories fortune, was arrested last night for murder. Well, thanks to me. Ah, she's just so 
awesome and likable. So Fred has been arrested because Velma didn't let him finish his sentence at the end of the last episode. She then wrongly assumed that Fred was going to try and murder her. And coincidentally, at this very moment, two policemen women kick down the door and shoot Fred in the legs. I... <laughs> <laughs> this will come as no surprise to anyone, but the writing is abysmal. It, 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 okay, no YouTube hyperbole going on here. The writing is god awful. It's terrible. We are dealing, legitimately, we're dealing with the writings of what sounds like a bitter 14 year old. I mean, I better, I better not say 14 year old. Mindy would probably be attracted to it. But. The writing is about as unfunny as it is incompetent. Fred's a rich white guy with a tiny dong. He did it. You didn't mention Fred had a tiny dong. Oh, yeah. Real baby carrot. And I'm going to ride it all the way to victory. I think the best way to describe this show is simply unfunny. Like, you know, there's nothing quirky, nothing new, nothing original about this. It is just unfunny. Terrible writing. If your comedy show is less funny than Schindler's List... Maybe someone needs to rewrite it. You know what 420 is, right? Um, yeah. It's code for adults who still watch cartoons. Even if that joke wasn't aimed at the very demographic of this show, it still wouldn't be funny. Who does Mindy think is watching this show? Did she think that droves of people would turn out to watch this because she's associated with it? No! People are here because they like Scooby-Doo. The joke would have made a little bit more sense if this was strictly a kid's cartoon. Because, I mean, you know, haha. Why are you adults watching it? But it's not. This is a cartoon aimed at an adult audience that makes fun of an adult audience that watches cartoons. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. And it's not a case of adults who like cartoons not being able to take a joke. This is, you can tell this isn't tongue in cheek. This is mean spirited. You, you can tell they mean this. I feel my hallucinations are like the return of high waisted jeans. It took a while, but we're finally through the worst of it. Dear God, please make it stop. The kids eat sheet cake at eight in the morning. You thinking what I'm thinking? Let's go get a sheet cake. High five. Please, please make it stop, please. I didn't know you think I'm a huge bitch who ditched you to be cool. What? That's so not true. Make it stop, please, please make it stop. I would upload compilations entitled Every Time Velma Isn't Funny, but I'd get busted for uploading entire episodes. $500 or nothing. Uh. <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! Yes, Queen! Yes! Ah! Oh, this is it! Yes! Ah! Oh, she got hit with the fruit! Oh, that was so funny. Oh, I want to fucking die. I basically confessed and have well-documented anger issues. I mean, what does that even mean? Hey, am I on a hunger strike? Where the hell are my pancakes? If you can make a member of the cast of Always Sunny appear not funny, you're done goofed. Drugs here. Get your drugs here. Nark. Nark. <coughs> White girl with too much money. <coughs> White girl with too much money. Imagine. Writing a show based on Velma. Then imagine self-inserting yourself into the character Velma and transplanting any sense of the original character. Then imagine that character becoming one of the most disliked characters in a television show ever. Will I sell you a kidney to get the $500 I need to make Velma date me? I mean, I'd be a fool not to at this point, right? <laughs> and then... Imagine writing another character that is so into the character that you've self-inserted into that they'd be willing to sell their kidney to try and get a shot at a date with that character. It's... <laughs> it's, it's so sad. Stop! No pictures! Unless it's in portrait mode! Oh God! He looks like Hitler! And not just because we compare everyone to Hitler these days. Right, Mindy Kaling is the Hitler of comedy. <laughs> Sorry, I can't just conjure up a whole new personality whenever I want. You could try writing one though. I mean, just a thought. The last video that I made covering Velma got quite a lot of attention. It got, you know, it got a, a good amount of views. Uh, so, you know, it would appear that dunking on this show will net me countless views and subscribers. But you know what? Keep them keep them. I, I don't want them. I, 
I'm giving up. I'm throwing the towel in. I didn't give up with Rings of Power. I watched every episode. I didn't give up with She-Hulk. But I'm giving up with this. I, I, I don't want to watch this anymore. I do... This... This is officially the worst television show I think I've ever watched. Ever. No hyperbole. I think this is the worst. Great. Now even just being myself won't work. <laughs> and as always, a big shout out to my top tier members, Puzzle One, Flunky, Jax, and Brennus. And we're also welcoming Jindra, who took a look at the uh, tiers that I'd laid out on my Patreon, and they said, no, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not even going to double it. I'm going to double it and then some. I didn't even know it was possible to pledge more than the tiers themselves, but it turns out that is a thing, and by God, Jindra's done it. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you must be insanely wealthy or you've recently robbed a bank. Either way, I really do appreciate your support. It's, it's crazy. Thank you. And of course, the tier two members, Steve the Goat, Dr. Melsky, Said, MG, Virgil, Kuno, Sacco, Mark, Maiden, Sensei, Fang, Hadzu, Michael, Terpia, Yon, Witch, Mendicant, Bias, and we're also introducing Dagger, D69. Nice. And of course, Michael, who not only joined the Patreon, but also joined... Uh, the channel as well, and also became a channel member. The, you people are becoming incredibly generous, and it's actually a little bit scary. And of course, a big shout out to the tier one members as well. I do also want to welcome Seb Miranda, and of course, Michael once again. Thank you. Uh... Imposter syndrome is never stronger than when I look at my uh, patrons and uh, channel members. Thank you for the support you show me. So to all of you watching, these are the people that have gone out of their way and chosen to directly support the channel. And you guys really, you help the channel in, a ways, in ways that you probably don't understand within the last couple of weeks. So, uh, you know, thank you for, for, you know, on behalf of myself and everyone else that enjoys watching these videos, thank you. And there we go, another day, another video. Will you join me for my next one? You better do. You little bitch. But until then, make sure you take care of yourselves and I'll see you all very soon.